Welcome back, Night Owls! This is Dr. Nighttime, and tonight, I'm going to go through how to relatively easily type math. Uh, as you've noticed, if you're ever trying to type up the math, you run into the problem that there are some symbols that just don't appear on the keyboard. There's no integral symbol. There's no divided by symbol. There isn't even a times symbol. And don't get me started on fractions and square roots. So, there are some ways of entering some of those, right? So, for example, if you're just in a regular word processor, I hit, on the, uh, I hold down Alt, and on the number pad I hit 0, 2, 1, 5, that will get me the multiplication symbol. But there are, uh, I'm going to introduce a way with the free program OpenOffice to very easily and relatively intuitively type math. Now, I'll mention the go-to program for typing math for mathematicians is LaTeX. This is not LaTeX. The thing I don't like about LaTeX is that to even start a document, you need to download a class file. It, it, it has no default settings. You have to download some preamble just to be able to type the equivalent of Hello World. If you want to just type, you want something that can just type. Typically, most of what you'll be typing will be words or prose. Then you'll also have a bit of math. And, as you may have noticed, when you're trying to do that with LaTeX, it, it doesn't work out very user-friendly, in a user-friendly manner for new users. Fortunately, OpenOffice has a really easy, intuitive way to do that. So, I said we wanted to put some math inside of a block of text, so I have down here a block of text. My favorite tongue twister. Esau wood sawed wood. Esau wood wood saw wood. All the wood Esau wood saw, Esau wood wood saw. In other words, all the wood Esau saw to saw, Esau saw to saw. And don't worry, I won't waste your time going through all of that. I'll include a version of it at the end of the video so that you don't have to sit through all that just to learn how to type math. So suppose in the middle here, suppose here I wanted to insert an equation. Well, one thing you can do that is insert, go down to object, formula. Now see where I have the F4 here next to formula? That's because I coded a hotkey. So that uh, I've got a shortcut, so whenever I hit F4, I'll open up a formula. How did I do that? I went to Tools. I went to Customize. Over here, Keyboard. There are shortcut keys. Notice by F4, I have formula. If I wanted to do that, I could go down here, I could click Modify, and I could find what I wanted each key to do. So, I'm here, I hit F4, and the window opens up down at the bottom, where I can type stuff. So suppose I wanted to type in 3 plus 5 equals 8. Now, as you'll notice, these numbers are huge. That's because uh, I also use OpenOffice for my PowerPoint style presentations that I use to film my Dr. Nighttime videos. There, yeah, you need everything to be bigger in order for it to show up properly. But there's an easy way, once you're in this formula mode, now when you click Format, one of the things they have is font size. And I can reduce the font down to a standard 12 points. If I wanted to change the font itself, You'll see, for variables it has an option, for functions it has a different option. Uh, I just, I have all of this as Times New Roman just to make it, uh, just to make it uniform. But there are options for that. Anyway, so obviously 3 plus 5 equals 8, you can type with just the keyboard. Now I'm going to hit the new line command, brings up a new line, it makes the next formula appear on fresh line. 
Notice it won't cause, uh, it won't by itself cause a line break in your text. You would have to do that manually. And if you want an, an extra space between formulas to make it easier on the eyes, you just do new line twice. So what if instead of 3 plus 5 equals 8, I want to say 3 times 5 equals 15. Oh, look at that! I don't need to do the all go to whatever. Just times. And it knows to do that. 3 div 5. Uh, yeah, sure, 3 div 5 equals 0.6. Division symbol. There's no division key on the keyboard, but I can do it this way. Now, what if I wanted to show something like uh, x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 1 just equaling x minus 1? There, it's a pain visually to use the division symbol. Let me come up with a new line for that. x squared, the up, little up 2 makes it a square, or makes it a superscript, minus 1 over x minus 1 equals x plus 1. Space there. And let me scroll down so you can actually see what's happening. It recognizes the word over to give you a fraction. You know, with LaTeX, to get a fraction, you have to do that whole backslash, frac, brackets for your numerator, brackets for your denominator, and heaven help you if you misplace a bracket. Oh, one other thing I should point out. See this dotted line around the plus? That's because my mouse, my cursor, is at the plus. So... If I wanted to click something and say, what does that lead to? I get an instant visual cue. Now, for a short formula like this, it's easy enough to work with. But as your formulas get longer, it's really helpful to have it automatically highlight what you're looking at. Now, one other thing you'll notice, these parentheses around here, they help for my mentally saying, or I do mean x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, as opposed to if I were to remove these parentheses, yeah, so see this update on question mark? It can interpret syntax, uh, that there's a syntax error, and just tell you something's wrong. It won't fix it or give you suggestions for it, but it'll at least tell you something's wrong. Yeah, so you see how I got rid of the parentheses around that. It turned it into x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. It's not very good at figuring out order of operations on its own. It can make a guess, but... If you put parentheses on that, it knows that parentheses lead the order of operations, right? If in the, uh, you know, the joke about uh, when the algebra class couldn't understand the order of operations, the instructor threatened that they'd have the following mnemonic. He would go, instead of, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or something like that, he would threaten to go to the principal and say, please expel my dumb algebra students. Anyway, if you want to tell it, group these together for order of operations, but don't put it about, uh, group these together for order of operations, but don't actually put parentheses in the formula itself, the answer is these curly braces. And now, it shows up properly. This leaves the question, okay, if it says a curly brace is, uh, if it wants a curly brace to mean, look at this now, how do you tell it to do a, uh, how do you tell it to actually put a curly brace in?
what you have to say is, it's a little confusing, but say left L brace, and you have to tell it right go, what goes on the right. If you just want the curly brace, you can say right none. Suppose I wanted the X plus 1 to be in curly braces. Then I can say left L brace, and then right R brace. And there we have that. If you don't want anything on the right-hand side, you do have to tell it right none. Some other stuff. What if I wanted to do some actuarial notation? Oh, sorry, before we get into actuarial notation, what if I wanted an integral? Because that's another thing that comes up a lot. A lot more than actuarial notation. What if I wanted to say integral from 0 to 4? Notice the uh, underscore gives you the subscript. The caret pointy uppy symbol gets you the 4. I could then say integral from 0 to 4 of x dx. I can say that equals 8. And finally, something I just looked into, actuarial notation. What if I wanted an annuity? Suppose I wanted a 30-year term whole... Uh, Sorry, 30 year term annuity on a four year old. So the big question, first big question is how do I get the double dot above the A? The answer to get, so to get a dot above an A, I can just say dot A. There we go. If I want two dots, I just say the dot. If I want three dots, the, the dot. I think three is as far as it goes. Yeah is as far as it goes. But we want to. Next, the 40 and the angle 30 for a 30-year term annuity on a 40-year-old, they go in the subscript. The 40 is easy. The colon is also easy. What about the angle 30? I can do a 30, but then I want to put the angle symbol there. There's no clean way of getting exactly the angle symbol, but you can get the horizontal and vertical lines separately. For the horizontal line, you just say overline 30. For the vertical line, if you try to just put in this, it's going to interpret that as the uh, logical or. If you ever want to include an exact character, what you do is you just put it in quotation marks. Now, there's one other thing that you'll notice. It looked fine before, but doesn't anymore. The double dots move. All we have to do for that, it's thinking double dot this whole thing. If I put the D dot A in curly brackets, there we go. And of course, if I wanted, um, if I wanted a uh, a uh, last survivor equivalent, or if I wanted it to be a thirty-year guaranteed annuity, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, if I wanted a thirty-year guaranteed annuity, then I just overline all of this, and there we go. 30-year guaranteed annuity on a 40-year-old. Lastly, because open office is decently well used, if you have any questions of, oh, how do I do this, that, or the other again, just Google it. And probably within about a minute or two, you'll have somebody who previously asked the question. So, if you're already comfortable with LaTeX, I will not claim that this is better than LaTeX for somebody who is already comfortable with LaTeX. But if you're not comfortable with LaTeX, 
and you find it daunting to learn how to deal with that annoying interface. And don't get me started on what LaTeX tries to do if you ever want to add an image to your document. That's... I'm glad I don't have to do that stuff much anymore. But here, obviously, to, to add an image, you just copy an image and paste it in, right? Or, or, or whatever your image is, right? You can put it in. But yeah, here, some people have uh, messed around with Equation Editor to try to get this. I find this so much easier and so much more intuitive to use than, uh, than Equation Editor. Anyway, as always, if you like the way I explain things and want to arrange a private session, click the link in the description. And until next time, this is Dr. Nighttime wishing you a good night. Bonus tongue twister! He saw wood, saw it wood. He saw wood, wood saw wood. All the wood he saw wood saw, he saw wood, wood saw. In other words, all the wood Esau saw to saw, Esau sought to saw. Oh, the wood 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 saw, and oh, the wood saw with which wood would saw wood. But one day, wood's wood saw would saw no wood. And thus, the wood wood saw was not the wood 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 saw if wood's wood saw would saw wood. Now, wood would saw wood with a wood saw that would saw wood, so Esau sought a saw that would saw wood. One day, Esau saw a saw saw wood. As no other wood saw, wood saw, wood saw wood. In fact, of all the wood saws wood ever saw, saw wood, wood never saw a wood saw that would saw wood as the wood saw, wood saw, saw wood, would saw wood. And I never saw a wood saw that would saw as the wood saw, wood saw, wood saw, until I saw E saw wood, saw wood with the wood saw, wood saw, saw wood. Now wood saws wood with the wood saw, wood saw, saw wood. I hope you enjoyed that. Till next time.